Now, one thing to consider, guys, is this, that the tenant fee ban only applies to assured shorthold tenancies or licenses to occupy. So if anybody in here has HMOs and uses licenses to occupy, this does apply. But what it doesn't apply to is company lets, uh, non-housing act agreements, anything that falls outside of a, an assured shorthold tenancy or a license to occupy is not applicable. Another thing to consider, that this is only on new agreements and renewals of tenancy, okay? So anything that you do now will fall under the tenant fee ban and you won't be able to charge them anything. But if, for example, you had in your contract that a tenant had entered into in January, that you would charge them £25 if they went into arrears and you had to write to them. That's just an example. You can still charge that fee until either the tenancy renews or May 2020. Does that make sense? So until May 2020 or the tenancy renews. The minute you renew the tenancy, it's deemed a new tenancy. Tenant fee ban um, is completely in play. Is there anybody in here that takes higher deposits than five weeks? Nobody at all? A few of you. The reason I'm asking is because when you renew any tenancies now, after the 1st of June, that deposit has to be reduced. So you need to go wherever it's registered and give back to the tenant the difference. What if you just go on to a periodic agreement? If you stay on periodic, you can keep the higher deposit amount, okay? But the minute you renew, it will become a prohibited payment if you don't return. Sorry, if you don't return the difference. Um, so this is something for landlords to consider. Is it worth renewing into a fixed term or do I still want the additional um, extra deposit that I've got as, as a protection?